what's up everybody? Thank you guys for joining us tonight. We've got Robert and Catherine Van Harris with us. So say hello. And then in the chat, if you guys could put the city where you're uh, calling in from right now, uh, wherever you may be, go ahead and put that in the chat, um, along with how many deals that you guys have done so far. And I would love to hear from you guys about that. Of course, also with us, we've got Hannah from uh, the Deal Machine marketing team and Elise, uh, she manages our Deal Machine community. All right, so we're getting some chats. Um, we've got Ryan from Miami, Florida, Randy from Charlotte. Uh, we've got Amy from Los Angeles, Gary from Macon, Georgia. And we've got Clinton from Tucson, Houston, Joshua Tree, California, that sounds nice. And uh, so Robert and Catherine, your main market is actually Atlanta, but you guys have done some in the Philly market too, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. We're originally from Philadelphia. So that's our, our birth. That's our birthplace. Yes. <laughs> Got it. And what brought you guys from Philadelphia to Atlanta? Oh man, just the, the land of opportunity. You know, we came here one day on um, a vacation, just took a quick vacay down here and um Man, just just seeing that it was just a lot of land, land. everywhere, <laughs> land. And when I seen all that land, you know, we just seen opportunity. We yeah. seen dollar signs, and we was just like, man, like, you know, we we you know, we need to go That's and start working on that land. That's what we need to be. So, wow, yeah. so you guys saw a ton of land, and you were already thinking real estate. You were probably already in that mindset, right? You, in order to notice the land, what what year was that? When was that? 2014. Wow. Okay, great. Yeah. So, and then, um, so 2014, that's been six, seven years now. Can't believe it. I feel like it's still mid 2000s. Uh, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> would love for you guys to provide some more background about yourselves um, in the next 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and then just for everyone here, we're going to bring on guests um, and, and let you guys answer some questions. Um, and then we're going to be doing that Q&A format until 8 o'clock Eastern time. Um, then we're going to do a second hour of a demo uh, of the software. So just so you guys know what to expect. Um, if you guys have those questions, you'd want to put those in the chat. And we will actually then bring uh, some of you on to ask it in person on the video. So with that, um, you've also been with Deal Machine for years, Robert, maybe not seven years because we haven't been around that long, but uh, tell me tell me the story from when you moved to Atlanta uh, to when you found Deal Machine um, to this very last year, this most recent year. Yeah, yeah. So basically, um, we made the switch from Philadelphia to Atlanta, and when we got to Atlanta, the, the plan was to um, open back up our construction company because we had a we had a um, construction company at the time, but I also was a licensed real estate agent in Philadelphia. I'm also a licensed real estate agent here in Philadelphia. I mean, in Atlanta. Atlanta. So I had to get a, all I had to do was get a reciprocal. So um, what we did when we came, when we got to Atlanta, we said to ourselves, you know what? We're just going to embark full blown, go, go all the way in on just real estate. We're not going to open back up the um, contracting company. So, um, Long story short, you know, our plans, everything kind of switched because our whole bread and butter, we had a whole contracting company back in Philadelphia. That was what we was making our living off of. But um, we was working with a lot of investors. Um, same, the way we had it kind of structured down here, the way we, we sell to a lot of investors, those investors give it back to us. And then my traditional real estate company lists those properties for the investors that we sell those properties to. So it was kind of structured the same way back there, but um, back in Philadelphia, but here, um, just not really knowing nobody. We didn't have any family, no friends. Um, oh man, our plan totally just blew up in our face. We ended up in a hotel, <laughs> me, Catherine, with our four kids. And my mom, you know, was with us. She was like, I'm not leaving y'all. I'm not leaving y'all right. until y'all get suited and booted. Until y'all get situated, I'm not leaving y'all. <laughs> we ended up in a hotel for a little while, man. And we just had our backs up against the wall. And we just um just started grinding just started grinding you know, you know doing what we know to do and we just got out there and just really started hitting the street started you know making the right connections and um yeah man found out about deal machine and um like it was very you know um 
affordable, you know. So that was one of the things we did first. We we went and downloaded the Dell Machine app. Um, I think that was like, I've been with you guys for years, man. I mean, probably around the time y'all first kicked off. What was it, like 2015, maybe 2016, you guys kicked off? Yeah, it was even, It was 2017 that we officially became a business. So, um, and, and we're put on the app store at the beginning of 2017. Got wow. you, got you. Yeah, so we speak, it, it, all, it all kinds of play a part then because 2016, June of 2016 is when we got our first deal, our wholesale deal off the ground here in Atlanta. That was our first big wholesale deal. Right. Now, Catherine and I knew about wholesaling, but we was doing wholesaling back in Philadelphia when, honestly, we didn't, we weren't even calling it wholesaling then. It was just uh, us Put putting your price money on, on the top. top. That was it. Put your price on the top, right? So, um, yeah, we got our first deal off the ground, man, and um, been running ever since. Running ever since. Wow. <laughs> That's so awesome. And, um, you guys got your first deal wholesaling after you decided your construction company wasn't something you wanted to start up again, I'm sure, because that's tough. That is a tough business, oh, right? Yeah. And uh, you probably like that wholesaling was a bit simpler and it paid faster, I would imagine. Absolutely. Oh, my construction business. Oh, my Absolutely. goodness. And, and, and what we loved the most about it was, uh, man, Catherine talk about it all the time. When it's a fire, you know, um, we can put it out. Yes. You don't have to we worry about on calling or you don't have to, to rely on nobody else. You know, we did more bag on firing than we did hiring with yes, the contracting yes. company. Yeah, it's hard know? to find reliable people in that business, truly. Yeah, so. it's very difficult, man. <laughs> we always say that um, um, good contractors uh, are hard to find. Great contractors are even harder mm -hmm. to find. So uh, when you find the good ones, you hold on to them. With rubber grip, don't let them go. Guys. Keep, <laughs> keep them busy. Keep them busy. For sure. I've experienced some of that myself, actually. You know, I have a one house that has been under construction for nine months, and that time is money because oh. you might as well, you know, you could lose all your profits if it goes several extra months just from your holding costs. Mm -hmm. so yeah. I completely, yeah. completely understand that. Yes. So Absolutely. true. So true. Yeah. Yeah, I just got a new kitten. It's, I'm not sure if you can hear him meowing, but <laughs> <Aww. laughs> I'm not sure what he wants. <laughs> so, you guys, uh, you you have closed about 25 deals in 2020. Is that right? No, we no we closed more, much more than 25. We closed. Um, I mean, just with the the investment business, we closed 49 deals um, oh. in 2020. We closed about 25 deal machine deals. Got it. That's what, that's what my notes say. Awesome. Yeah. Great. So like, was it any harder to close 25 versus your first one? You know what? The first one was no, it wasn't. The first one, man, was just like, um, it's one of those things where we'll remember it forever. It was smooth. Um, it was kind of just like dropped in our lap. You know, we was actually across the street from a house that I was getting ready to list. And the um, neighbor came outside and called my wife over and um, gave us the people. She's like, hey, y'all well, looking you want at this house? Yeah, he's like, yo, you want this house next door? I'm just tired of it looking like this. I'm tired of the grass right, right. not getting cut. I'm just tired of it. Um, I'm going to give you a number. Give her a call. Right. So he was like, cool. And my, my wife, you know, the whole time my wife talking to this lady, I'm across the street you know, just, you know, doing, you know, real estate agent stuff, right? I'm just over there doing a walkthrough, talking to the contractors who was finishing up the project at the time. And um, yeah, she gave us the numbers to the owner and we um, we contacted, the matter of fact, we didn't even contact the owner until two weeks later. Oh yeah. We I didn't even it. contact, my wife came and Catherine came to me and was like, babe, did you ever reach out to the people? And I'm like, what people? She's like, the people people that was next door or in such and such level we about to list the house i was like oh no i never reached out to him and i'll reach out to him now and i called him up she answered the phone and um you know make a long story short we was at the oh they had to go through like a short pro, um, probate um real quick it, it happened fast i don't know if it was already in the process or what happened but it happened fast because like maybe three to four weeks later and i do probates all day this one happened fast like four weeks later we was at the closing table yeah, and we, man, we, we make on that one like 
thirty thirty thousand dollars was our first thirty thousand dollar check. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. So it came it came from when you were an agent. That's when you got your lead talking to the neighbors, right? Yeah. And you got thirty thousand uh, dollars. Man, that's good to keep followed up with them. Wholesale. So here I am, David. Right? I'm I'm an agent now, right? So I'm doing you know I'm doing deals at this time. I'm, I'm picking up the pace. You know, I'm just getting here two years ago, so I'm, I'm doing a little something now. But here go. Um, it was actually $38,000. It was a $38,000 check, right. right? You never forget those numbers. $38,000 check <laughs> versus the five, maybe $7,000 tops max I was getting as a traditional real estate agent. So you already know once I got that, I was like, okay, they started to do it's, homework. It's, it's time to get, get, you know, get in this lane and find out what's going on here and yeah. find out more about this wholesaling business. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you, you were making a lot more per deal as a wholesaler than it is an agent. So that's when you shifted oh, focus oh, all the way that way. Oh, and yeah. um, again, you did 25 deals with Deal Machine, but 49 deals total last year. And then you've got some drivers that fuel the leads for you, right? You, you actually probably don't drive yourself anymore. No, no, yeah, yeah. So the way it's set up right now, um, we have a, a well, including my drivers, three, seven, we have an eight-man team, including the drivers. Um, so I have two acquisition managers um, that play the role of disposition managers as well, and they do their own driving, right? So they do their own driving. They load up their own leads into the deal machine. You know, we skip trace them at the end of the week, and they call their own list. So we have outside of them. Um, my oldest son is a driver as well. So he load up his list. Um, we, um, and I have two cold callers. So two acquisition managers, which is also the disposition managers, two cold callers, um, me and Catherine as the lead. And then we have uh, three drivers, one in Atlanta, two in uh, Philadelphia. Love it. Do you talk to them every week? How do you manage them to make sure they're adding the right kinds of properties? Great question. Great question. Yeah, I, I believe in... Um, one of the best investments you can make in your business is just investing in your team. I spent a lot of time with my team. A you know, lot. you ask, you ask uh, Rochelle, you know, she had to tell you, I spent a lot of time with them. And um, we do a lot of videos, a lot of Zoom videos right now because of the pandemic and things like that. But I have an office. Um, but for the most part, we call it a team huddle. We call it a team huddle. We have about three or four meetings a week. So um, they know what to expect. They know what I'm looking for. They keep everybody um, I, I, most of my time right now is spent coaching. So that's basically my main, my main job right now. Got it. I do my weekly driver meetings on Friday. So tomorrow I'm going to get to talk to my drivers and, uh, I like to give them feedback in a group because it's more time efficient. Yeah. They can, they can learn from this question and that question. Same reason why we do that on the, on this call. So guys, this is a good time. If you have some questions for Robert and Catherine, Go ahead and start asking them in the comments um, and we're going to go ahead and bring some of you guys online um, here really shortly. And to your point, David, too, and to your point, another reason why it's great to have your drivers be in the meetings with the rest of your teams is because those drivers eventually graduate to be acquisition managers and disposition managers, right? When it's no limit, right? So it's no ceiling. So eventually they may want to grow. They may want to go to the next phase of yeah. their career. So um, they're able to hear, you know, they're able to hear the way that the other, my other team members think, how they talk, how they are out in the field moving. So they're inspired by that. So, you know, you'll have one of the drivers say, you know, okay, you know, or, you know, outside of the meeting, you know, what was that? What was that y'all was talking about? Assumption. What was novation? Like, what was y'all talking about when y'all was discussing that? And then I explained it to him, I was like, he got a, you know, creative financing deal locked up right now. And this is one of our exit strategies that we utilize on deals like this. So right. it's just yeah. sky's the limit, man. So yeah, you know, um, they get to basically be in a room with, with other giants. You know? Yeah, totally get that. If, if you're spending time with them now, they're training for the position that you don't even have open yet. But right. when you're ready to open that next position, you've got great candidates that have already gone through a lot of that training. That's right. That's so smart. That's it. That's right. So always be looking for your next hire. You see what I'm saying? Always be. I learned that the hard way. Trust me, with the contracting business, always be looking for your next hire. Because right now, I have a bulletproof team. My team are 
best team yeah, a man can ask for, right, man? It's, yeah, A team, right? <laughs> but um, you're going to eventually, they can only take but so much, you know? We're at that point now, like, they can only handle but so much. So eventually, somebody else going to have to start coming in and filling those gaps. Yeah. So I'm um, always, you know, be looking for that next hire. Absolutely. Uh, one, one thing that we've done training wise uh, at Deal Machine is I've time blocked every Monday at four to spend an hour just training everybody on something. It kind of forces me to figure out what do they need to know most next as a whole company, not even position specific. And I've gotten really good feedback on that. So we're going to keep doing that training wise. Uh, Micah, how you doing? Good. How are you? Great. Hey, uh, where are you calling in from? Deerfield Beach, Florida, I'm right outside Fort Lauderdale. Okay, nice. And what type of real estate investing are you doing there? Uh, I pretty much am a licensed realtor, and I'm getting into the investing side. I'm pretty right, much like Robert. Can, pardon me. Much like Robert. Yeah, similar to him. I heard him say that, but uh, yeah, I've pretty much been trying to do the wholesaling in terms, and I actually wrote a pretty good deal on a contract and a terms deal. But when the guy showed it to his attorney. He then uh, he advised him it wasn't a good idea. I would have made like thirty five grand on that deal. That would have been my first deal. So it was a bummer. But um, I've been using a uh, prop stream and batch leads. But SMS I think is dying to be honest because now they're putting stop and end on all these messages. So I'm trying to find another route. So my question was, I wanted to find out like far as driving for dollars and building a team, what kind of structure is it that's working, that's keeping people around to keep driving and wanting to be enthusiastic enough to get in their car and put in the time to help find the properties? Yeah, yeah great question, Mike, great question. Um, well, everybody is different, right? Um, like I said, I, I, I do a lot of coaching. I do spend a lot of time with my team. Um, so I, I pay my drivers $15 an hour and I give them 500 off of every um, deal that we close on. So $500 bonus, $15 a, um, an hour. Um, that's $15 how an hour. the structure. Okay, okay. And how long have you been doing it for? Real estate in a whole or just- As far as no, this driving for dollars team that you guys have developed? Ugh, 2018. Yeah, 2018. 2018. Yeah. It, it was, it's, it was fairly, it was fairly new. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we we're trying other strategies, but yeah. Yeah, but when we found driver for dollars um, and started, you know, building a team, oh man, it was lights out. Lights oh, out. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. No You're problem. Welcome. No problem. Real quick, Mike, on that deal, you that deal, I just want to touch on that deal. It fell through because the agent seen the price. I found the owner, and what happened is when I, I contacted the owner on the phone, he uh, pretty much we did I did the contract with him. And I was going to get the property on an assignment, but the house was turnkey, but there was enough room left for me to make about like $33,000, $35,000. And Why he did it fall through again? Pardon me? Why did it fall through? He showed the contract to an, uh, to an attorney. Okay. And the attorney then said, advise him not to. And I wrote up just a straight up regular, you know, as is contract too, from the MLS that we all have access to as realtors. But unfortunately it fell through and I heard that can happen sometimes, but at least I know I came close and I'm still following up with him because he's got a, he's got like an illness. So I'm hoping just by staying in contact, maybe he'll change his mind because he won't let me list it. So I'm trying to figure that out, but we'll see. All right, next time do a double close, man. Do a what? Do a double close. Do a double close? Do a double close. Next next time you find that that type of deal or even with that deal, it was, let's just say you was locking it up for $100,000. Make sure that your indirect contract for $100,000 with that, that seller. That seller, okay. I never see your, what you're selling it for. So if you were selling it for 135, they would have never known that because they only would have seen the price that you was purchasing a property for. Yeah. So do a double close next time, man. He never signed it. He took it to an attorney first. And I think when they saw the assignment checkbox, I think the attorney kind of like said to him, hey, this guy could like just move the contract and not even be liable. But I don't know why it would make a difference. Talk more about that. Link up with me on social media, man. I, I have some um, things I could definitely. Yeah, because um, Robert probably would have talked to the attorney at that point. Yeah, man. We, 
I don't have the time to do it now, yeah. but we need to talk. No, it's cool. Right. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll look you up on, on IG. I what your, what's your IG? Can you drop it in here? Yeah, what is it? Oh, it's my IG? Yeah, yes, I think sir. So. Rob Van Harris. B as in Victor, Rob Van Harris. Rob Van Harris. All right, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. It might be good, brother. All right, take it easy. All right, man. Micah, great to have you on. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, I found that unless I paid my drivers hourly, then I would spend time training drivers that fizzled out. So I, I like, I'm with you. I pay that hourly fee. Your, I just noticed you were at 15. Yeah. Say it again. Oh, an hour for the oh yeah, hourly fee. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to you gotta take care of them, man. You got to treat them right. Um, and then the bonus is just the plus because now everybody can be excited, right? When we close, so we're so yeah. celebrating. They can get, you know, out of, the, out of the list that they upload, you know, every two weeks, they may get one, two hits. So, you know, right. especially what I, 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 I drivers in Philadelphia now. So everybody's excited, man. Everybody is, you know, being taken care of. Everybody making the money that they want to make at the level that they're currently on. So it's a win-win for everybody. Yeah, our acquisition managers drive too, but we don't we don't pay an hourly mm -hmm. uh, fifteen dollars an hour to our acquisition managers because they get a large, you know a percentage of the deal. A bigger part of the deal. So yeah. Strictly drivers, um, we our drivers we do pay fifteen dollars yeah, an pay. hour to keep them you know motivated to mm -hmm. you know to work. We're all grown here, right? So yeah, right. And yeah, you know, I know that people love to think, oh, I'll pay my drivers when I close the deal, but they got bills to pay now. You know, so. Right. They, definitely going to leave you if you don't pay him now too um megan megan how are you hi hey there hey everybody where are you calling in from cincinnati ohio oh we're very close very close and um what was your question megan uh i think i kind of combined two of them but basically just maybe a synopsis of your best tried and true systems and processes from when you drive, you see a distressed property, you know, hit the lead button uh, <laughs> and kind of take it from there. Maybe a summary of your steps and steps that you've learned through experience. Yes, definitely. So yeah, we drive, um, we drive and we look to hit a certain mark. Now every market is different. Um, my guys, have a certain amount that we expect for them to load up a day. Um, so they, um, they, per day, they load up a certain amount and then um, rather they do it in four hours, eight hours, if they knock out the amount that they're supposed to knock out, let's just say that that amount is 100, 100 leads a day. If they get 100 leads done on a four hour shift or an eight hour shift within two hours, I still give them the same pay. That's another thing too. So if you do a two hours worth of work, and um, you complete, I mean, if you're doing an eight hour shift and you complete it within two hours, you still get the same pay. So that's one of the things. I'm sorry. Dang, I'm sorry about <laughs> that, guys. Um, so that's uh, the, my baby. That's one of the, that's, so that's one of the, <laughs> he's always like literally <laughs> like coming in, doing stuff You're like serving. that. Yeah. So, so, yep. So we, we do it like we, um, they drive, upload a certain amount of properties, let's just say a hundred. And then at the end of the week, we have 500 for an example. Um, we skip trace that list. And that when we skip trace that list, my assistant skip trace the list on behalf of my drivers mm -hmm. and my acquisition managers. They skip trace the list and on Monday, we start cold calling that list. Now we start filtering as well. So after we're done cold calling that list, we have a new list by the next week, right? Because they was driving all that week. So the week that they're cold calling that 500, they're out driving for the next list. So after they're done just with that 500, now we're starting to filter we're starting to do text messaging. And after text messaging, we're filtering the whole time. So now that five, right, can trickle down to three, right? So now and after the three, we start cold, we go call, cold calling again. So that just that 300. And then after the cold call is RVM drops. And now we just now incorporated that mailers back into our system. So we, we wasn't doing mailers all last year, but now we're taking the remainder of the 500 at the end on the fifth filter and we're, we're doing mailers. So did, is that, was that did too that much? Sense? Did that make sense, Megan? Was, I, was it too all over the place or did you understand that? No, that was great. Cause that's kind of what I'm looking for as a lot of these things can be, can be you know, our time factors. 
A, wanting to streamline it, uh, and then B, so you were kind of talking about filtering um, and starting with cold calls, then sending a text, uh, then maybe a ringless voicemail, then maybe as you go up, you know, somebody might send a mailer or something. Yeah. What, what's your filter? Is it who gets back to you? What's that filter that takes it from 500 on down to say 300 on down to some actionable leads? Yes, it's, it's, real, it's real simple. It's one of those things to where you're going to get about 50 do not calls, don't call me no more, right? You're going to get about another people to say, another 150 to say, I'm not selling. You're going to get about another 50 to say, call me back next year. So that's 200 right there, right? When you pull it, you can actually tag it within your system to when you pull that, pull it out your system to, through the text messaging, it'll only pull it at 300. You follow what I'm saying? And you can do the same tagging on your text messaging system. So when you pull that now, you just basically keep calling until they answer, until you run through the whole list. So what we was doing, we was special, we special, my team specialized in cold calling. That's what we we specialize in, right? And what we were doing, we just kept cold calling, kept cold calling, but everybody is not gonna pick up the phone. And then without even realizing a lot of these numbers come up, scam likely yes. or robo calls. So you have to be on top of that. But a person may pick up a, a text message, an email, a mailer, you know, if they have, you know, put your face on it, you know, something, you know, something different. One of those uh bill machine postcards, the uh what's the one we like? The um block, mm -hmm. block um postcard. Oh, there you go, Elise. Right there. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, just stand out. I'm telling you, it's just right. different filters is what we learn and it's what's making a difference. Yeah. So Robert and Catherine have added a lot of sophistication to it. I might add that if you haven't done any one of those types of marketing strategies, that you may just pick one and be make sure that you're very consistent with it in order to, to keep it simple to do that first thing. Uh, Robert, Catherine, what, what's your take on that for somebody who's not done any of those things? Totally agree. I totally agree because remember, we, was, we started off doing Mellers and I was explaining this to Rochelle um from your team i was like we was doing mellers back in maybe 2017 18 yeah. but we stopped mm -hmm. because we just we didn't have enough money to continue on the the um the promotion right so we just became great at cold calling so you heard me say that earlier we just became great at cold calling i just coached my team spent a lot of team um, time with my team because i've done it for over almost 15 years uh, cold calling was my thing even when i was a a newer agent and agent for years. I did it every year of my career. So um, it's just one of the things that I had a gift in. So I took that and I just literally focused in on that. So we just started with the filter. That's something actually that, that we just started. So um, it was all cold calling up to recent. recent. Have you oh. got a couple of cold uh, calling script tips or tricks oh, yeah. of the trade for those cold calls? <laughs> Yeah, that he's like a mad scientist. Yeah, and he's he's tried a little he's bit of everything. Reality, I can tell, but <laughs> he's like a, a mad scientist. For us regular folks, say it again, Megan. Say the last part. I said, uh, clearly the personality you've got, but maybe a couple of one liners or sentence starters for the rest of us folks. Yeah, basically, yeah. just build rapport. You just got to build rapport. Yeah, and um, I would love, listen, I'm, I'm using you guys to see, like, I, I love to talk, right? So <laughs> let's, let's link up, Megan, let's link up, let's link up, um, let's do something to where we can, um, you guys can survive. You know, I have a YouTube channel, I have, you know, social media. I'm always, I'm actually just started sharing um, my um, feed pits of my, my team behind the team and me, behind the scenes of me training my team and having meetings with my team. So, but you made a good point though, building rapport. Yeah, rapport is the key. Yeah, it's about yeah. building rapport, be just human. be yourself. Be a human, yeah, because <laughs> all that, um, you know, reading from a page, it sounded like you're reading from a page, right? It's Trying just, to tell someone, you know, relate to them. Yeah. You know, listen, listen to them. You always tell us, make yeah, sure you're listen. listening. Do 80 20, 80 20 rule. You know, you want to um, do 80% um, listen. listening, 20% talking. Because exactly. they tell you, they tell you their heart. They tell you rather not they're willing, ready, able seller if you just listen. If you Most if of they us have a problem sell. that you can really solve, if they have a 
they really have a problem, yeah. you know, because we're problem solvers. That's so it. it's part of just listening. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Listen for that pain point. Try to find out where you can plug in some help and Absolutely. go from there. Absolutely. Well, thank you for letting me share. Congrats. Good work. I'll look you up on YouTube for sure. All right. Um, thank you thank so you much. much. Great I always found it hard to start the conversation. Um, and that's even still something I struggle with is like the very start of a presentation or the very start of that conversation. And um, when I'm doing a cold call, oftentimes, you know, I just say, hey, are you the person that owns this house? Would you consider an offer on it? And then kind of let them talk from there, um, kind of choose their own adventure uh, rather than following a strict script. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, man. and you can always jump in and out. You see what I'm saying? You can always jump in and out the script to help you to not to go in a tantrum, right? And help you to stay on track. But for the most part, people love to do deals with people that they want to do deals with. You see what I'm saying? They're going to do a deal with you because they want to do a deal with you because you built rapport with them or at least gotten them to a point to where they feel comfortable enough with right. you to kind of let go, let down their guard. Right. And that don't happen within five minutes, I don't care how great you are, how great you are on the phone. That just don't happen in two to three minutes of you just reading a script and just getting right to the bottom point of the script. And you just think they just want to, you know, show you their hand because the thing, one of the things too, you want them to give you their price, their number, their number, you know, and you first the deal from there. So it's just so much to it, man. But David, like you said, that's, that's key. You want to make sure that you, um, you're building that rapport. You say a little bit, but you let them do most of the talk. Brandon Dukes, how are you, man? How you doing? Sorry about that. My computer just crashed when I when you guys pulled me up. I had to go on my phone. Glad you're here. Thank you. Um, I guess my, my question was, how did you know when you needed to expand and uh, get drivers? What was like that turning point when you guys knew like, okay, we need to really expand and 10X this business? When you feel yourself being pulled in multiple directions and you're not showing up and being a hundred percent in each of those lanes, you know what I mean? Because you can't be a hundred percent on everything. You can't really be a jack of all trades, not really. Because if I'm being a, a, a dad, I have a lot of hats. I'm a dad, I'm a father of four, right? I'm a husband, my wife need, needs attention from me, right? That's the right. A lot of attention, right? That's a that's 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 a head of show. You know what I mean? You got I got dog. You see what I'm saying? I'm I'm, I'm a coach, right? I have I, well before I was a coach. I was a real estate agent. I'm an investor. I'm writing contracts, trying to do my own contracts to close. I'm going out showing buyers' houses. Listen, when you're waking up in the morning and doing all that you can do. You average on your five hours, six hours of sleep or whatever you average and you feeling that it's still not enough. It's time to, you know, delegate. It's time to delegate. Delegate in order to elevate, man, is my saying. Delegate. Okay. And that's one of the best things I ever in my business. Yeah, I also feel like the more you, like, it's time to expand when you feel like your foundation is strong. You know, because if you're going to bring more drivers on, they need to make sure your home front, your home base is a strong structure in order to handle and bring on more people. Because essentially, you're going to have to be paying those people. You're going to have to be managing those people, monitoring what they're doing, making sure that they're not wasting your money and your time. And so you really need to make sure that we did not expand or we did not even embark on expanding until we had a strong enough system we felt like within the few people that we that we do have working with us. So it's a good idea to make sure you have that strong, the foundational things in order before you start trying before to start manage more players. people. Yeah, I totally agree. That was okay. good. Brandon, yeah. I can share a few things from the deal machine side if you'd like. Sure, sure. So there's three rules that I follow is, first of all, I hire to get things off my plate rather than hire to add capacity. And that, ties into number two is before I hire somebody, I wanna have a fully laid out documented uh, description of what I do and how I do that position. That's why number one is necessary. If I hire to add capacity, I've got no process for them to follow and no way to teach them how to do that. So um, I had a third thing in mind. What was the third thing? 
I might come back to it if I think of it. But those, those are two things that really help me figure out who I need to hire next. Oh, the third thing is every once in a while, I'll do like an assessment of the things I do and how much happiness it actually brings me. So if I'm figuring out what to get off my plate next, I don't want to give away the thing I love. I want to get rid of the thing that I'm not the best at or that I don't love. And like one of those great examples is like Elise on social media gives her energy. Me on social media, I actually am a bit of an introvert. So it wasn't like a great fit for me, but Elise does an amazing job at it. And so that was something I decided like, I need to get off my plate. Okay, thank you, thank you. Really appreciate it, thank you. Thanks again, guys. Nicholas Lopez says, great job, Elise, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she is phenomenal with those videos, man. Really, no, you are. <laughs> Literally, that is your lane all day. <laughs> so, Robert and Catherine, how did you two meet? <laughs> oh, man. We met in the studio. Yeah. The studio years ago. Man, we've been together for... 15 years, 15 years, going on 16 years, um, and been married for, uh, just now celebrated our 10th year anniversary. Yep, so yep. we met doing something we both love, love which was music. Music at the time, yeah. Oh, amazing. What instruments do you play, or what do you, was it, were you singing? Well, I was sing, I sing, and he I was raps. a rapper at the time. <laughs> yeah, man, that was my, it was even two things I was going to be, be successful yes, in, David. Yes, he used to tell me. Be, I told her a long time ago, I was 19 years old, and I told her, I said, listen, there's either two ways I'm going to make this, baby. It's either going to be with the music, real estate or, or it's going to be real estate. So, He's like, course, I'm going to own started, an apartment building, so just so you know, we're going to have an apartment building one day. <laughs> but I did it. Though. I purchased my first property when I was 21 years old. Sure and I've been rolling ever since. So. <laughs> could we do, could you, could we uh, interest you in maybe creating a theme song for Deal Machine? Okay, okay. Oh, wow. oh, man. Okay. Look, okay. I'm, hey, I'm up for it. I retire. I'm, I'm into it. I retire, but Catherine, she's still running. No, 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 no. It's got to be a duet. It's got, it good. has to be a duet. That would be amazing. <laughs> I will do it if it's not a duet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. We, we, we got you, David. We got you. Yeah. You've done so much for our business, man. Anything you need. You Absolutely. Know, we got you. Hey, well, congratulations on 10 years of marriage, too. Oh, thank, man, you thank you so much. Man. Thank you. Yes. We appreciate you, dude. Thank you. Yeah. It's been a mouthful. That's why I tell him, man, about that, dele that, that, that delegate part. Delegation, man, it's, it's the key. I Delegating, it's, uh, it, it was helps. one of the, it, it helps, dude. It was like one of the, I, I actually, I think with me, I was the type, my mindset, everything had to be done by me, right? If you want it done right, you know, get it done yourself mentality, but that was the wrong way of thinking, mm -hmm. you know? So I started reading, I started studying, you know, listening to, you know, the great, you know, the Robert Kiyosaki's and things like that. And it's like, that's the wrong way of thinking. Yeah. If anything, like you said, David, you just hit it. Find the things that you dislike the most and start delegating those first because somebody else loved that. Mm -hmm. like, at least like she loved doing social media. Like I don't like doing social media. <laughs> I'm more of an introvert, extrovert type of person. When I start talking, I can we talk. Have to force but they have to, to force me to do it. That's why I don't have as much content as I should. But I just don't, I, I don't like it. I don't like totally it. relate to that. <laughs> Carol, are you there? Are you there with us? Um, Hannah, do you know what question she asked? Maybe you could ask it for her if she's not able to join us on the video. Yes. Um, so she asked, how do you how do you determine where your drivers drive? Like what areas they go? Um, how do you determine that for your business? Mm -hmm. We um, honestly, at this point, because we've been kind of just like doing it for a while now, my drivers do the homework the day before. So the way they do it is um, we go to the hot spots. We find out, we have a way in tracking um, where the homes are selling right now and where the percentages are. Like what homes are selling the most, what areas, what areas is on fire. And we attack those areas. We go hunting 
for the most part, we, we get feedback from our buyers. Our buyers let us know for the most part where we need, where to, we be need driving. to be driving. You see what I'm saying? They let you, you know. So after you've been doing it for a while or even know somebody that's been doing it for a while, just ask them. Just say, um, what areas are you looking to purchase in? You know, what areas? If you, you just now finished up a house over here in 191, whatever, two something, right? What if I found you another house? Would you mm -hmm. be willing, ready, and able if I found you a house tomorrow? And if those answers is yes, and you start building that report, call your buyer's list. That's another thing, too, that's important. Build that report with your buyer's list because they'll tell you where to go hunt. So that's that's my answer. Yeah. Speaking of buyer's list, how do you wholesale that first property? Where'd you find your buyer? We were Remember, already, I was a real estate agent. Yeah. Right. So I was um, when I came here because I had the contracting background, I automatically shifted to wanting to work with investors. Right. Um, so because that was my specialty, I knew how to go in and I had an eye outside of what most agents would have. I knew how to calculate costs. I knew what to look for. And of course, investors that draw them to me. But it was a bigger plan for me because, again, I had a I had a a tunnel vision as to ultimately what I was going to do with those investors and what I was going to need them for. But eventually, I mean, eventually I started utilizing them to sell my deals to. But when I first got here, I was just helping them calculate costs and things like that, listing their homes for them, and I already had them in the pipeline. Right. Alan, how are you doing tonight? Doing great. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Sorry, the Wi-Fi is a little hard out here in the forest to get, but... <laughs> So I had a couple questions for you guys. When you guys, you guys have great drivers going through picking up leads for you guys. How do you build credibility with the sellers when you reach out to them? Oh man. Yeah. So we kind of touched on this. Yeah. We just kind of touched on the same thing. Um, just building, just building that rapport, you know, um, everybody finding that person with that problem, finding that person with that problem that you can resolve, you know, you're, you're a problem solver, right? So the more people you find with problems, the more money you will make. And the more calls you make, the more people you will find with problems. And where we come in, where we kind of have the problem is that if you're not reaching enough people with the problem, then in my personal experience, you're not making enough calls. Now, when you say credibility, are you are you referring to, you know, maybe an issue, you, maybe a person just feeling like you, you aren't able to purchase the home or... Yeah. So for somebody starting out, like, I don't have a track record. I haven't done a deal before. If they ask you, can you close on this deal? Like, how can I know that you're going to close on this deal? How can you essentially communicate to them that you're going to follow through? Mm -hmm. So listen, that's just it. Um, if they're basically, you don't have no track record, right? You can use the leverage of somebody else's um, track record for number one. That's why you want to make sure you connect with people, connect with people on social media. Like right now we live in a generation, my friend, to where at the click of a button, you could be connected with that person that you can utilize their website, their name, their, you know, their uh, track record to be if needed, if needed. Like, I don't like to this day, right? I have money in my account, but I never show PN. I never show uh, proof of funds. So if we're talking like a person actually for proof of funds or something like that. I simply say I'm privately funded. Right, I have people that utilize IRA accounts, and you can use a lot, utilize the same script, the same script, right? Um, proof of funds. Okay, so Mr. Seller, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, let me explain to you how this works. I'm privately funded. My team and I were privately funded, so we get what's called private capital. So my, I have a certain group of people that have IRAs, self-directed IRAs, Roth IRAs, 401ks, and things like that to where we all come together, each person, each individual, put a certain amount of pot, put a certain amount of money in a pot each month for us to invest in these properties. So I can't go and just grab a proof of funds from each person just to show you, because it may be 10 people on one dip. You see what I mean? So that means I would have to go get 10 different POFs. And they understand that because it's the truth. People like myself, we raise capital all the time. So I have people that use private um, self-directed IRAs. So I don't, if, if I was to do that, but you can do this though. You could go to my website and see other people um, bragging about us. You can see them raving about us. And, if, and guess what, my friend, if you don't have that website, send them to, send them to my website. 
Tell me you're one of my partners, right? <laughs> leverage. You see what I'm saying? Leverage your, leverage, your, leverage, uh, leverage your connections. Look, you on here with David. David, he's a giant in the game, right? So David guarantee you, because he, he sells real estate too. <laughs> Send him to David's website. You allow, look, man, use what you got in your hand. You're talking to me today. You got Gabe, you got all these investors on here. Send them to our website. Tell awesome. I'll tell him I'm working with Rob. Good deal. That's it. <laughs> That's it. You know what That's I mean? Right. Who's, 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 who's going who's gonna, to who's gonna argue with you on that, right? Alan, I couldn't tell you if I've been asked for proof of funds before. When somebody has been in distress, that I feel like that's been the last thing on their mind. I don't. Do you get asked very often, Robert, Catherine? No, no, we don't. No. But we run across them here and there. You know what I mean? Um, and they, you, they utilize that script every time. And we're not lying about it because we really are. A lot of our deals and why deals we do are a lot larger than what a lot of other investors or, or wholesalers may get because we do a lot of that. We do a lot of hoteling as well outside of wholesaling. So we really do raise private capital and they really do, people do use their self-directed IRAs to fund this. You know, so we use that all day and we run with that. And people don't even know how to even put that together. People don't, some people don't even know that you can invest in uh, real estate with IRA accounts. They're like, so that automatically confuses them anyway, right? So once you just throw that out there, they're confused anyway, right? So they're just like, all right, cool. No worries. You know, yeah. where's the contract, right? Because you, if you know all this, you know something. If you talk about IRA accounts, 401ks account, 401ks, and how you can invest with them, oh, you must know something. Yeah. yeah, he sounds like he knows more than I do. I better listen to him. There you go. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And if all fails, just send them to David, David and Rob's site. <laughs> That's all you got to do. Hey, there's your website, vanharrisgroup.com. No, and that's my traditional um, real estate website. But my um, my website that I sent my buyers to is uh, discountedhomesga.com. So my buyers go there. And then my sellers go to, um, what is the Sell seller site? Sell your home. So, so I got to look it up. I don't even know about heart, man. Um, if one of my team members are in the, um, on one of the websites, y'all put it up there, but I can't remember over this. Uh, it should be in the chat. Yeah, it should be in the chat. But yeah, they, we got, um, if, and then what happens is you build rapport with both. You build a track record with both because if buyers go, we have two separate sites. So if buyers go and they sign up for our site. They see that we're doing deals, right? They see it because we got a bunch of properties that we've sold. And then sellers, when they go to our um, seller's site, which is separate, Right, they're able to see all the reviews. So, man, yeah, I mean, building those relationships with other buyers, and you know, Ellen, I don't know if you, um, you know, utilize Facebook and things like that, and join the different groups, um, investment groups or whatever in your backyard. You know, when you're on the phone, you know, with a seller, you you really can tell them that you have access to thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in capital or millions in capital, right? Because if you're making connections with buy with other investors, other wholesalers, um, you know, connecting on the, the Facebook groups and things like that, then you're truly telling the truth. You do have access to lots yeah. of capital. So you can truly buy their home. Or, yeah, you know, I, give I them buy homes. Asking. We buy homes too, Island. So um, you really do have capital back you right so let's just say you come across a property um what market are you in Island? so i'm in uh, northern virginia. virginia virginia okay i haven't done any deals in virginia but you come across a deal though and it makes sense hey man send it to me and if i don't buy it guess what i have a wide range of people that will so awesome so do you reach out via market. instagram or what's the what's the best way to send your deal um, um yeah my what is it rob van harris rob van harris on instagram all right. We'll do. Thank All you, sir. Right. Well, thank you, thank Alan. You. Look forward to working with you, man. Look forward <laughs> to seeing you soon. Yeah. Alan, thanks so much for the great questions. It's been great to have you here. And next up, we've got Amy Kane. Amy, how are you doing? How are you Amy, doing? How you doing? Hi. Hi. Um, thank you guys so much. I'm taking notes. I'm uh -huh. getting so much value uh -huh. out of this. Awesome. Um, where do I start? Should we... 
talk about social media. You guys have a YouTube channel? Yes. Has that helped to build your business? No, no, <laughs> not at all. I'm, I'm gonna tell you, I, I just said it um, a little while ago. I don't personally, cause I'm so busy, I do so much. I stated I'm um, a father of four boys, some boys, the energy that runs through this house just in itself on a daily basis is just enough to burn out one man, <laughs> right? We have two dogs, a German Shepherd and the little one you just seen jump up here minutes ago, right? <laughs> Um, we just do a lot, a lot of hats. So I don't, my son, my oldest son now, which is 18 years old, believe it or not, he was like, dad, you have a lot to say and you have to start sharing this with the public. And I'm like, I know. And I start and I stop, I start and I stop. And he's like, you know what? I take over. I just got to, you got to share what yeah. you're sharing with your team and the rest of us, you have to share you. Cause I love giving back. I'm a giver by like anybody that know me, um, set with me, they know that I'm a giver, like, like to the heart. So, um, yeah, it haven't helped me none because I haven't been really focused in on it and, and dedicated to it, but I'm pretty Not sure it'd be personally, great. No. And yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure it could be with consistency. It really could be, but no, not for us. Yeah, yeah. not for us. I've had uh, on my Instagram, I've ha actually had my cash buyer list increase because of Instagram. And oh. Elise is amazing on social media. So um, one more question. And we're both real estate agents. Mm -hmm. And because we're real estate agents, we have access to resources that investors don't and other wholesalers don't, what resources do you use as a realtor and how do you use them? Really outside of the um, MLS, um, I really don't use anything else. I use guard farms when doing my, I do I use the farms when using my um, par farms and guard farms when doing my contracts. I know a lot of investors don't do that, but I do. I disclose that I'm an agent. I always disclose that. I'm put inside the um, special stipulation that um, all parties agree, you know, that Rob Harris is um, a licensed, licensed real estate agent, agent and is sure. acting as principal on this transaction. But other than that, because we do a lot of double close, a lot of, like I told you earlier, but other than that, nothing like deal machine. And I'm not just saying this as I'm on the phone because um, we're here with David, Letko, and the whole team, Anna, Elise. And I'm, I'm really saying this because it's the truth. Like anybody that know us know it's the truth too. Like, Bill machine once I mastered, because what's happening is you get just in that alone, especially in my market, it's very saturated, right? We have a lot of giants roaming the land. So in my market, what happened was when I seen that I was able to get better deals, bigger and better deals, that's what I focused in on. I use title because you said your drivers know what areas, like I use title for the turnover rates. And if Deal Machine could have some filter, and I'll add it to the suggestion box after this, but we're able to pull neighborhoods and see the turnover rate to see how many houses are selling in that area. And that's how I decide, should I drive this area? Is the turnover rate in that golden area? Mm. Um, that's good suggestion box. No, no. Hmm? That's really good information, Amy. Now, where do you say you pull that information from? Title. Title. Oh yeah, your title rep, they can do next sellers, they can do empty nesters, they can do um, boundary searches. If you're, before you drive a neighborhood, they can tell you like 5% turnover rate, that's a good neighborhood to drive. Well, we just took we just took a note from took a note. Okay, I'm taking notes. You guys are taking notes. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, right? That's what it is. Listen, That's this it. right here is how you grow. Yeah. This is how you go to the next level. Just talking with people. People are willing to give, and we don't know everything. But when you get in a room with people, it's not about knowing everything. It's about talking with people, and they may give you a little something. You may give them a little something, and it helps you. We help so each other. Iron sharpens iron. That's it. I just I didn't even know that. Wow. Come on, Amy. Come on, Amy. <laughs> Let's go. What else you got? What you what else you got out of that, that little, you know, that little book of yours right there? What else little secrets you, you know want? what? I got I got one more. What is a realistic goal for your first year? 
as far as how many houses you should be adding every month, how many cold calls you should be doing, what numbers you should be hitting. What's a realistic goal for somebody like me who's committed and consistent with my cold calling and I have the drive and desire, but am I dreaming big enough? Yeah. What market are you in, Amy, if you don't mind? Los Angeles. Okay, okay. See, it, it's, gonna, it's gonna change depending on the market. See, mm -hmm. my number may be way outside of where, what you would need to do in your market to get your first deal off the ground. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, like David guaranteed would say, you know, 250, you know, um, a month, I think it is, David, you go with 250 a month, each driver. What was 250 a month? Yeah, yours is 250 a month. You recommend they do 250 a month. They get their first deal off the ground. Is that correct? Please. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I always say that, you know, minimum. Minimum, right? So that's where I, that's where I started years back, right? But now, if David go look at my deal machine and see how many, I'm not even going to give you that number because it's, it's, it's probably crazy, just one person alone. But mm -hmm. we upload a lot because our market is saturated, right? Mm -hmm. And um, what, what I will tell you this, though, right? Power is in a follow-up. So rather you have 10 leads or 20 leads, the power is in a follow-up. Yep. And the more you're able to track your numbers, because I always, I tell my team this all the time. I, it took me years to get this across to them. Guys, real estate is a numbers game. Once you're able to learn the numbers, you can make as much money as you want. Because if you know right now, Amy, right, that every 10 leads I can convert to, right? Mm -hmm. For every 10 leads, if, if I can, let's just say I'm going to get, Seven, seven appointments out of 20, right? I'm gonna write about five contracts out of that seven and I'm gonna close two, right? Mm -hmm. What would you have to do to, to double your lead? What would you have to do to double to turn that two to four next, next month? Yeah, it's really a numbers game. All it? you have to do is times it by two. It's a yep. numbers game. Just have yep. to times it by two. If I know, if I get 20 leads and out of every 20 people I talk to, I have a good enough mouthpiece that I can get about seven to eight appointments. And I know if I get in front of seven to eight people, that's going to help me to get at least three of those, four of those on the contract. Now that those four, you and I both know because you're an agent too, right? So two of those going to fall through, right? Two yeah. of those going to fall through, which is going to lead you with two. You know how that go, right? You know how we be waiting, how we you don't want on, on um, as real estate agents, but them things would be out of four, maybe three will fall through. <laughs> But with these, maybe two will fall through, right? Two fall through, then those are your numbers. Then you go off to that number. Then you say, okay, let me double that. I want to do four closings a month. So now I need to talk to 40 people, right? I need to get, I need to get 14, 15, maybe 16 leads. And then when it's all said and done, I'm going to get four conversions off of that. So just track your numbers, follow your numbers. Get it. And you seem like you, you're very, very, very knowledgeable. So that's going to be easy for you to do. And I'm going, you guys, I'm going for the luxury market in Los Angeles. So here's a tip, you guys. If you're driving affluent neighborhoods, you're not going to see as much deferred maintenance in the homes that you would see in working class or middle class neighborhoods. In, more, in rich neighborhoods, look for original condition homes because it's a very good indication that that house has probably not been updated in decades. Hmm. Oh, yeah. That's a great, great tip. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Amy, I, I also wanted to say that um, the 250 number is what I say as a minimum. Um, okay. I find that in higher market, higher price markets like Los Angeles, you're going to need more than that. So I just okay. wanted you to have that expectation set. Put like a thousand on your sheet. Um, okay. You'll have to find more leads, but your payoff will likely be bigger than what I'll find here in Indianapolis. Because true. Price. One phone call can change your life. That's right. Yes. So true. So true. Well spoken. <laughs> well spoken, Amy. <laughs> Amy, is there any other questions that you have for us? And thank you so much for sharing your tips too. Oh, you know, you're blown you're up right with your right. title agent comment. Yeah, title is going to be one of your biggest assets I, when you're doing your research about what neighborhoods to drive. Um, I have no other questions, guys, but thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much, Amy. I appreciate it. Amy. Well, thank you. That was great. Yeah. So it's eight o'clock here in Atlanta. 
and in Indianapolis. So Robert and Catherine, we know you have a lot of hats, three dogs, some kids, <laughs> spend time with each other. <laughs> um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna invite you uh, to join us for the second half if you want to, but you're definitely not obligated to because you only committed to this first hour. Uh, we're gonna transition to a software demo, but before we transition, I wanted you guys to connect with these two. They've given out their Instagram a couple of times to connect on deeper questions that people had. So feel free to follow them and reach out. Uh, Robert and Catherine, you guys have any other closing comments? What a beautiful family you have. Oh, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, they're really part of our team. We really put them to work, David. <laughs> we really put them to work. They're saying just the show. We really do put them to work. Even a little one. Even a little is one. Your oldest, is your oldest the one that runs your YouTube and your social media? Yeah, we sure do. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, but um, that's it, man. Um, you know, quality over quantity, you know, and um, I just would say, you know, invest in people just as much as you're invested into your business, you know. Um, that's just been my, that's been one of our secret sauces. You know, we like we said earlier in the, in the, in the webinar, we spent a lot of, time with our team and now they're assassins man and they go out there they do what they're supposed to do and um they're killing it you know and i just think that um this year already i know I'm, i don't think i know that this is going to be our biggest year yet you know this year. so i'm excited i'm excited i'm excited to um learn more from you all yes. build more with you all and david and and the whole build machine family you guys are i mean phenomenal you guys have helped our business Yes. I can't thank you enough, man. When Josh called me, you know, and asked me to, you know, uh, start telling me about the enterprise account, it was a no brainer. I'm like, what? That's a small token to pay for. Listen, hear me. That's a small token to pay for the gift that you have given to this world through this act, my friend. For real, man, you are a blessing. And I'm not just saying that, man, as a cliche. I'm saying that because this act have changed our lives, man, and they're going to change the life of uh, million, millions of others, man. I, I know it without a question or a doubt, my friend. Absolutely. Thank you so much for saying that. That means the world to me. And uh, it all started just because I was trying to get into it myself and do a little, make my process a little bit easier. So it just makes me so thankful that you guys have gotten value from it as well. And I certainly appreciate you guys coming on here to share back with the Deal Machine community. So thank you again. Yeah. Yeah, no pleasure. problem, man. No problem. The customer service team is through the roof, too, man. Before I started, um, um, met Rochelle and I'm with the enterprise. You know, she's my main connect now. Rochelle, you hear me keep mentioning Rochelle because she's oh, like, no. yeah, yeah. I right? saw her. But before Rochelle, it was, I was talking, to, uh, it was Joy. Yep. Joy is phenomenal, dude. We used to bug her. <laughs> we used to be, and she would get right back to us. Boop, 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 boop. We was like, yeah. Now I'm big on customer service yes. because remember I've been running businesses for years. Yes, so when I seen the customer service, I was like, these people are on to something. Like they're niche, they're not, they're not just about you know, hey, give me your money, and then you 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 ask the question, you don't hear from that person until ten days later. No, you guys are on it, man. Your team is phenomenal, man. Absolutely. Really. Thank you so much. It, it means so much for you to say that. I mean, we've obviously invested in that, but it's, it's great to hear that feedback. Rochelle is on here and she says, I love Robert and Catherine too. <laughs> hey, Rochelle. <Love> <laughs> That's our girl. We be masterminding together. Me and, yeah. me and Michelle and the team, we, Rochelle and the team, we be masterminding there. That's my girl. Girl. Also, by the way, I thought I saw somebody on here that said they were your acquisitions manager. Are, are they on here? It was probably. probably my whole team most likely is on. It should be on here. I mean, oh, Cephas was on. Cephas was on. Yeah, he was. Okay, but yeah, that's my. He's that's probably. One of my team oh, members. it's dark. He's probably. Yeah, off that's one now. of my team members. Yep, Cephas. He's a. He's a. Yeah. He shared the website. That's my dude. He shared oh, the we website. We appreciate that. <laughs> uh, my man. Yeah. There he is. <laughs> There he is. Oh, uh, okay. Tanya Sanders. My mom Mauritio. on here. Mauricio. Uh -huh. That's one of my. Yep. He was one of my first drivers, man. Yeah. Oh, man, you guys are awesome. I appreciate everybody tuning in today, man.
Listen, we appreciate each and every one of y'all. Yes, Let's continue yes. to build together, go together. I'm going to make sure Captain and Jair, my oldest boy, keep me on track with dropping more, um, you know, um, social media content, things like that, man, for sure. Yeah, and I just wanted to add, just stay consistent. It's so important to stay consistent and, do, and just don't grow discouraged in the process. Don't give up, you know, to everyone, everyone that's on here that... You're trying to build your business you're trying to you know get that deal that first deal off the ground mm. or you're just hitting a ceiling um with with you know acquiring new deals you have to stay consistent consistency is key um if you stay consistent um if you 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 spend time studying and practicing your scripts and and just doing the research on youtube so much available to us now in this information age to where there's really no excuse to not become better you know we have so many free resources right so just if you stay consistent you, you master your craft um you're going to get that first deal you're going to get that second deal never get comfortable if i had anything to leave with you all it would just be don't ever grow comfortable after your first uh deal don't don't put don't hang your head up and say, I have a $30,000 check. Let me go ahead and, you know what I mean? Take a vacation and all that. Cause guess what? That money will be gone before you know it, right? Keep building your pipeline. Stay Keep hungry. making your calls. Stay, yeah, hungry. stay hungry. Stay out there driving, doing what you need to do. You don't need money to start this business. All you need to do is know how to drive. You know what I mean? Yeah, know how to drive. Yeah. Download this amazing app. app. Yeah. And 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 just stay consistent. And this coming from somebody, guys, listen, this coming from two people in 2014 was living out of a hotel room with their kids, right? I can't imagine. I can't imagine. Listen, with, with our kids. It's one thing, see, That's for, the men, for the men on here, no, like, listen, man, hotel room for us, man, listen, give us some pocket money. We we gonna make something out of nothing, right? We're gonna make it happen. But when you looking at your babies and you looking at your beautiful wife and you like, yo, I got to make this happen. For that's a whole nother, that's a, it's, it's like a I'm lightning bolt bolt going through your heart. It's bigger than just you. So mind you, we said that we didn't get our first wholesale deal off the ground until 2016. Mind you, we got here in 2014. So the struggle was real. You see what I'm saying? We had no family. This is coming from people that's in a totally foreign land. Right, we're not born and we're not born and raised here. We had no family, no friends, mm -hmm. so and was able to create a business. Right, you know that, gave, that have given us freedom. <laughs> Guys have given yeah. us freedom. It's no excuse for y'all. Right now, I said it earlier. What? There's only three things that's going to stop you from making the moves that you need to make today. Right? It's fear. Fear paralyzes you. Right? Emotionally, mind, body, and soul, and most of it is in the mind anyway. Right? Or laziness. You're lazy, right? You don't really want to get out there to do the work. You don't really want to get out there and make the money that you need to make because really, you're just, you're just lazy, right? You don't really got the umph. You ain't got that drive. You ain't got that fight. You ain't got that why. See, my kids not having nothing, you know what I mean, nowhere to sleep. You know, they own bed to sleep in at the middle at, at the end of the night was my why, right? You know what I mean? So, or, or three, you know, you you watching other people because I said it earlier, again, connect. There's no excuse mm -hmm. to connect. So if you're not connecting, you know what I mean? It's, it's just, it must be some type of hatred in your heart because at the end of the day, hatred, if you're not connecting and you're watching people and they're motivating you and they're inspiring you, reach out to that person, let them know that they inspire you, that they motivate you. And you can reach them by the click of a button, connect with people, guys. And that hatred in your heart, that spirit of hatred is only going to let you go so far. Right? So, guys, there's no excuses. Get out there. Get it. Grind. And I'm telling you, it's, you it's won't. It's possible. It's, it's so possible. Yeah, it's so possible. possible guys. Hey, man, I took enough of y'all time. God bless. David, yes. thank you so much. Lisa, God thank you. All of you. Hannah, God, thank Hannah, you. Church. My gosh. <laughs> I, like, I was just feeling it up here. I think everyone was in the chat. So thank you so much you. Uh, for all of this. Also, if we ever have a deal machine uh, event of any kind, y'all are speaking at it because my oh, gosh. Okay. We'll be there with bells Let's on. Let's get it. <laughs> I told you when I start to speak, I, is the problem is getting me to shut up. That's not <laughs> Is I, I am going to start tagging you in things and being like, all right, 
Robert, you need to get on social and like start saying, <laughs> I mean, you have so many nuggets that you could literally just like snap real quick on a story that would make someone's <laughs> day. I know I would be all about it. Yeah. Um, and I appreciate that, at least, especially coming from yeah. you. You are a social media queen. Oh my we gosh. Checking up at y'all. Um, yo, you got it. You got it. Like, <laughs> We're just literally. passionate. We're just passionate. We just want, want to see, we want us all to win. And if there's enough struggling going on right now, so mm -hmm. in our world, so well, know, we're that's why we share. We're, we're gonna be keeping in touch to get the theme song. That's what I messaged David. Right, I'm like, we right, need them okay. to make a theme song for this. Um, <laughs> bring me out of I'm the there. Time, I'm there. Y'all gonna bring, gonna bring <laughs> me out. Robert, we're just gonna huh. have to bring you right back out of that retirement. You know, hey. brush it off. Hey, why not? You still got it. You oh, still yeah. got it. Let's play riding a bike. <laughs> Like bike. Wow, I came out of retirement. <laughs> they made me the dream. Listen, listen, Dill Machine team, they got me to come out hey, of retirement. Only for Dill Machine. Only for y'all. That only was our top level objective this year. We did. And now we've checked that off. And now we just need to get to go in for the music video and everything. We've done one already. So, <laughs> like. Hey, that's so innovative. I love, I love it. it. I love Thinking it. Thinking outside it. of the box. Don't. That that's right. Never get comfortable. Video. You know what I mean? Catherine, Catherine literally, you hit my chord when you said don't get comfortable. Cause that was when I was in sales, that was the biggest thing is was don't get comfortable. Always. And it also goes to don't if you are comfortable, get uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. that, that is his thing. That's me. He all is day. like that is him preaching to us, to everyone all day long. Mm -hmm. Because kids, don't want to get comfortable. That's how you go somebody broke. is on you your get top. Comfortable, you get broke. <laughs> Believe me, somebody is right on your tail. That lead that you didn't call, that 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 conversation that you didn't have. Oh, trust me, someone's gonna pick up the phone and have <laughs> a conversation, and you're gonna you're possibly gonna miss out on twenty five thousand, anywhere from twenty five thousand, forty thousand dollar check because you got comfortable. So yeah, For sure. we live by that. We live yeah. by that. Thank you guys so much. So Thank blessed to have you guys in the family. Thank you all so much. This has we been awesome. It. Amazing. Thank you guys. Thank Anytime. You so Anytime. Anytime. And with that, we're going to transition to a software demo so that you guys can get your questions answered about any of the technology stuff. Uh, Robert, Catherine, again, thank you so much. Um, Elise, are you down to give me, give this demo with me? Yeah, for sure. And um, y'all, I will say I put it in all caps before, but we have a training with some amazing trainers on how to get started. Don't forget to sign up for that. Um, it's amazing. Literally, we went through it as a deal machine team and it um, it helps you with those building blocks because I know a lot of you have some really um, good questions starting out and they're not done by any means. I want you guys to know that, you know, we're here to help you with that because I know some people were feeling a little um, conscious about that. For sure. Can you repost that link one more time in case uh, they didn't see it the first time? Yeah. Let me get it up here. Man. Hannah, please, please email them. Thank you with, with us all attached because, I mean, that was just fantastic. Oh, my gosh. I'm ready. Woo! All right. Um, yeah, go ahead. Start. Start us off. All right. So I had a, a lot of you were asking how many leads do you need when um, getting a deal, right? So David has the enterprise dashboard up right now. But, like, if you're starting out, there is another dashboard that looks similar to this fill it out, take literally five minutes to just put in how many deals you wanna do, put in your why, put in what you wanna do with this. And we actually made, it may be cheesy, but like this is what the big CEOs do too when they're going on there. They put a check because they're putting it into reality, making it reality. So put it in there, put in where you're from because like David mentioned, if you're in LA, if you're in Atlanta, if you're in New York City, I saw someone in here for that, you're going to need to double, sometimes triple the amount of leads that you are putting in compared to other markets like us in the Midwest. So it's just something you have to kind of understand and, and accept. And someone asked when the next webinar is going to be. We actually have them every other Thursday and you can sign up for them right here. Hannah's already got us teed up for the next one down here. We'd love to see you guys on. Um, I love seeing a lot of you continue to come on and um, get to know you guys even more. 
But also big thing here in the dashboard for those of you, it's not just setting up your goals. It's not just signing up for the webinar. Your analytics live here. If you're wondering if you actually, it's not if, when you track your KPIs, when you track what you need to track, this is where it's going to live. So if you scroll down, you're going to see how many leads added in January, how many mailers, active leads, and then it breaks it down even more. And you can filter this by person who added it. David, um, you can speak to team wise, filtering this out um, between drivers when you pay them, correct? Absolutely. I would go to the driving tab to, to look at that graph. Okay. Well, actually, are you talking about which part are you talking about? I'm talking about leads added. So that is, I believe, the first one. Yeah. yeah. Leads added first part of this graph. And yes, I can filter it by certain drivers. Anthony Garcia is one of my top drivers here. Oh, Anthony Molina. Sorry, Garcia is another one of my drivers. I always mix that up. <laughs> Dang. Oh, yeah. These guys are first class. So I have four drivers. So I add quite a bit of leads to my account every month. My gosh, and he's down from the month. That's crazy. He did 2,000. Well, you know, it was Christmas and stuff. Right, right. right. No, but that, but that's still amazing. His, he's on a non-holiday. He's doing double that. Right. So this is your analytics. And then if you scroll back up, there's two little buttons at the top right that are really important. It is your activity feed. And especially if you have a team, this is huge. This shows you what mail you've sent out, what you've skipped traced, where your drivers have been. I mean, literally everything you do is right here. So Martin, Martin's been driving. Um, he added 81 leads. Holy cow. Um, so this is huge. The other tab that you have is going to be your calendar tab. If you are sending out marketing through us, this was a feature request by a member about how to um, track their mail, make sure they're budgeting because budgeting is key. So if you go to that little calendar feature, you can actually see when mail is expected to drop, how much it's going to cost, and you can actually see a preview of the mailers that are going to be going out to those properties. Um, and you can see David has mail tracking. So this is an add-on feature you can have for $20 extra. And it actually tells you like when it was printed, when it's in the area, when it was delivered. And someone was asking when you should call, definitely call them. Um, but the nice thing is, is you know when the mails drop, so you can actually reference that too. Um, when you know the mail has dropped, you can call again for the third time and be like, hey, I sent you a postcard. You know, did you get it? And that shows them you put forth even more effort than just calling them. Yeah. Um, okay, dashboard, I think we're good. Let's move yeah. on down. Also, just so you all know, I know this is a lot. This replay is gonna be on tomorrow um, and I'm gonna go through and timestamp it. But we also have, I've made individual videos for each tab um, so that you, if you have a question about a specific tab, it goes through everything and it's on our YouTube channel. Um, not to sound like spammy, but go like and subscribe and, and turn on notifications for all that good stuff because we have great stuff that comes out. I know I'm biased, but it is. Um, <laughs> the map portion now. So this map portion is going to be for if you have our street engine. So um, when you're driving around, you'll actually get to use highlights. I know some people were talking about that earlier. Amy, I think, mentioned it actually too after she was off. But this is where you can um, highlight different properties by, I mean, there's a kit and caboodle of filters. Um, you can create presets for your drivers. So that way you say, I mean, I, I tell mine green is good. If it's not green, don't add it. Um, and that saves me time when I'm vetting through the properties. And then um, you can just like do custom ones. So this goes all the way from sale date. If you have a unit count, if you have um, a buyer that's looking for a three bedroom, two bath, you can filter for a three bedroom, two bath um, unit counts. I mean, the whole shebang. Um, if you're driving, the steps you can take is you would hit the arrow button at the top right to lock into your location. You would oh, then- uh, My location for my browser was turned off. I need to- That's all right. And then you would press, there'd be a start driving button in the bottom and you would press start driving um, and then you would just get going. 
Now we have a um, feature coming out that's for planned routes. Um, you'll learn more about that on Monday. Um, oh, tell them about it. I'm excited well, about that. I actually, I have it on my phone, but uh, so basically what you do is you say free drive mode or planned route mode. And this is for pro professional or enterprise. And this is where you go and say planned route. You can choose from a list you've already built, whether that's organic through list engine, um, if you've bulk uploaded leads, um, or you can actually create a list of your own. And it looks literally just like this with the filters and, and the presets. So you can just press it. And then it's going to say, you know, 60 leads in this route. You press start and it's going to tell you turn right on South Bada Street and your property will be on the left. And you can, um, there are different voices, by the way. Um, you can actually preview the property even before you get there to see if it's something you want to. Now you may be saying like, why do I need this? Why don't I just go driving for dollars? A lot of you and a lot of people end up pulling lists and then to just see if there's added distress to them, you drive to go look at the property. And also this is a great way to connect with neighbors. Maybe you see somebody in the front yard, you can be like, hey, I'm an investor. Do you know anything about this property over here? Um, so it's just a really cool feature. Um, we It is not available for your deal finders yet, but we do have a workaround that I will have a video on that you can um, use to get some of your drivers to use this feature that's coming. Um, and then the, I have a question. Yes. Can I delete these, some of these like gibberish presets? Is that, is that <laughs> yes, I believe you can in settings. Okay, thanks. Uh, yes, I understand that completely. Um, David also has on here, you see these green lines, these are your routes and you can zoom in, zoom out, but you can see what areas you've actually driven. Your drivers can see this as well. Super helpful um, when you're driving. So you don't go driving over the same areas, except for if it's like yellow and red, that means that it's been a while. So you might wanna go check up. Um, one of the places I drove today the house actually on Google Maps looked really nice and I drove to it. It did not look really nice. So i um, glad I drove to it because <laughs> I wouldn't have known. Um, and the other, and it was the opposite for another one. One looked really crappy on Google Images and then I went to it and it was really, really nice. So that's a buyer's postcard. I know Rochelle said that in the, in the chat. You guys can send buyer's postcards. We have a video on that as well um, that you guys can check out on the YouTube channel. That, am I missing anything? Actually, Michael Warden said, can you do that narrative voice again, please? I wanna get the full experience. Ah, yes. Well, you have the uh, down under, turn right on, do, 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 do. And then we've got, um, uh, we got all sorts. We have British. I mean, there's like literally seven different accents you can choose from. And uh, you all will get to see me play around with those in the videos, because <laughs> I have a little too much fun. Thanks for making uh, it fun. Yes, you're welcome. Uh, leads tab. So I just made a video on how to use our free CRM. If you do not even have our free CRM yet, just go do it. I have a quick start guide that's coming out that tells you just the basic. Come in here, import your list that you already have, get it in here. We are making a beefy CRM this year, just a real monster of a thing. So get in here, load your list. You can see it right here. David can go through really quick and be like, oh, that looks too nice. Not, not interested. Um, or that looks perfectly disgusting. Love it. Um, and then you can go in, see different things. You can add a note, you can tag people. David's, David's doing all sorts of goodness. And then also coming to you on Monday, another surprise that you guys are just just follow us along. This journey is going to be magical. I love that you take pictures of every house. I wish all of them were straight. Ah, look, and adds a little smiley face for a cushion. Um, and you guys can see the activity in here too. If David, if you want to flip on that detailed view, I'm not sure if anything's going to really show. This one? Oh, no, no. Uh, right there at the bottom right where it says detailed view the in the notes section right at the bottom corner. Go to enter note here and then go over to oh, the right. Oh, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Here's and, the detailed view down here, guys. 
it's really tiny. But if you turn that on, you can see every little thing like Martin used a skip trace on this. You can see everything that they do, anyone does through this. Um, there's Georgie. Uh, then you have your list and your tags. I know that um, Robert kind of talked about that. Your tags are what your drivers and what you can use to help also sort through your leads by putting if there's um, stuffed mailbox, uh, tall grass. Um, I interviewed a guy today and his son, his 10 year old son does driving for dollars. And he said his favorite thing is seeing tarps on the roof and seeing a, uh, seeing just a, a the nicest crappiest house on the block oh yeah so i got my tags and i've got them set up for biological growth i know tarp on the roof is definitely one of those you taught me handicap ramp too that's a good one handicap ramps a huge one because there uh, i was i was first um brought on to the idea because Frank Cava from Cava Properties, they do 400 properties a year on the East Coast. Um, he just had, he looked back at his data and he saw that 25% of their deals had a handicap ramp. They weren't even looking for it. It's just how it worked out. And a lot of times it's somebody that's got a home that's, um, you know, and not a, not a new one, like one that's been weathered for years. That, that means that, you know, they probably are going to need to move out of their home at some point because they need to go into a, a nursing home and the family's not going to know they're not going to want to fix up that house before they sell it. So those handicap ramps are really great indicators. You guys should add everything with a handicap ramp, in my opinion. No, I 100%. Um, yeah, so going the leads list, honestly, is a beast of a thing because you can do so much in it to organize your leads. Again, I know we just dropped a lot on you, but go into YouTube for tutorials or join the trainings. Happy to go through these again. The driving tab is your street engine. So this is the driving for dollars. So what a lot of you know deal machine as um, is the driving for dollars. So in your driving tab, this is where all of your routes lie. So if you are on basic, you don't get the live route planning, but tracking your routes is still really important and it does still live here for you. Um, David, you can talk to some of the benefits of tracking that and everything. Yeah. So actually, um, I mean, what are the benefits? Here's what I do. Let me just show you what I do. That might be easier. Love it. So I, I pay for drivers. I want to make sure they're doing the right work because otherwise I'd be wasting my money. So uh, there's a few aspects that go into that. Here it is. Really quick, Ross. Yes, it is easier to use the Google photos, but sometimes they have like a tree in the front of them because the Google image has weird things. So it is better to, if you do have the time to actually take the picture. Totally. And if you get a postcard that has a Google photo, it looks like a robot put it together. But if you get a postcard that has a photo from your cell phone, you can absolutely tell the quality difference and they will know you're a real person that's local. that's actually been by their street and they're going to take you seriously and give you that call back in front of whoever sent them a Google postcard in my experience. So this is what I do every week. I'm about to do this tomorrow with my drivers. So every driver has uh, two columns, hours and leads. Julie and Elena are on Tark El Musa's team. I, I manage them uh, as well. But anyway, so I, Anthony says he did 30 hours. So what I do is I pull up this graph because um, I pay him by the hour. And then I switch it over to uh, time driven. There you go. Anthony Molina. And uh, I would do a custom date range to select like the last week. Okay, so then I can tell uh, 46 hours, you know, he went over time, our contract says max 40. So I'm going to be paying him for 40. The other thing he needs to do is it's not a surprise because we review this every week, you know, so if he worked extra, like, I'm not sure why he did that. But um, anyway, I make sure they add 12 properties per hour. So I say 365 is what he said. Um, and then I just double check it here with him on the video chat. We do this in real time with everyone on the same phone call. And so then I look at a uh, number of properties added. And to do that, I actually go to the leads view. I filter it by uh, added by. And 
And then I do date added last seven days. And to get the total, I click this right here and it's 575. So what I want to do is uh, I, I want to take 575 divided by 40 because remember 40 is my uh, max hourly that I said that I can commit to paying. Um, 575 divided by 40 hours, uh, that's 14 an hour. That's great. It's pretty close to 12. It's good enough for me. What I don't want to see is I don't want to see Anthony putting in 40 hours but adding 30 properties an hour because I know I probably don't want to buy properties in areas where there's every property is run down. So that's an indicator to me to be like, Anthony, I don't think you're in the right area because the, the areas I want to invest in, you probably can't find 30 in one hour. You get what I'm saying? So these numbers help me give them feedback and ensure that they're in the right type of areas. And if he's on the low end, like four properties an hour, again, that's not worth paying for. And he knows that he needs to hit at least 12. That's my guidance for them. So that's the type of feedback um, that I deliver to them. And these metrics help me do that. And that's why I put together the scorecard. If you don't have drivers, this could be kind of the way that you keep your own self accountable um, or set your expectations for yourself um, as well as a starting point. Oh, sorry, I killed the screen. That's all right. No, that's a great. And with tax season coming up too, you guys can do this for deductions for your business. Yeah, absolutely. So to that point, <clears throat> you can just download. Well, first of all, you could select last year and figure out how many miles you drove. And then like the government tax deduction rate, I think is like 50 something cents per mile. So then you could directly deduct that from your taxes, I believe. And uh, that's how you'd handle that. I don't deduct it since my drivers are contractors. They, they deduct it themselves. So if you're hiring drivers, you definitely want to tell your drivers to do that. Um, and you guys, this is also where um, you recruit drivers. So uh, Robert and Catherine have our enterprise plan. So you actually can go to the drivers tab and there's a landing page that actually is, it's a training portal. And you just send the link to people who, um, to add your, to your team. And they actually go through this training portal that you set up. And then they go through all the things that you don't have to walk them through with, with Deal Machine. So it saves you time. Here's Josh going to talk here in a half a second. And you can put your own videos in here as well. That's what's really cool is you can customize this. Yeah, there's more than the greeting video. Once you get them in, you can turn on all these training videos that we've done for you on welcoming them describing how they're going to be paid hourly per property or per closed deal, um, the types of distress you want them to look for. And these are a few examples. Yeah, this is a really, um, especially if you're growing your team, big plus when signing up for enterprise um, and a great recruiting tool. But this is also where you can see who is on your team. And um, even if you're on you know, basic, you get one driver, professional, you get two. This is where you would find them. Um, going down to the list engine. Vroom, vroom. So building a list, really easy, honestly. Uh, it's, it's super easy. You can type in a zip code, the city, you can draw over a specific area, which by the way, the route planner I was talking about, this is exactly what it looks like. I mean, and what's so nice is if I'm in a neighborhood and I don't want to drive all the way out in one zip code, I can just draw over that, like the two blocks that I'm in to see if there's anything. Um, and then you can actually, uh, David's going down, you can name your list, smart list, huge. Anything that doesn't match your criteria gets either pulled out or brought in every Monday. How, how nice is that? I mean, why wouldn't you toggle that on? And then you can sync your marketing. Make sure your marketing is set up to what you want it to be though. I'm gonna put that little disclaimer there. Right, and then it'll give you a preview of how many properties it estimates are gonna be in this list here. So I did my zip, my area, no zip code and vacant. Yep. Yeah, and all of your, even if you don't have list engine, all of your lists organic 
any bulk skip tracing, anything are housed here. So even if you don't have list engine, this is where your list will be. Um, next is mailers. So um, I know Robert talked about the templates he likes. I showed you guys, this is the, this is the blocks. I have a picture of me, my boyfriend and our dogs on it. I have gotten a call out of it. Um, you can check the YouTube channel for that. But it has the picture of the house there and on the back. There's David's nice, nice mug right there. You can customize this whole thing down to the colors, down to, you know, the wording. I like our wording, but you can also change it to, to read more like a letter and be very specific for your area. That seems to do really well. Um, and then you can put this in a drip campaign, which means any of these you can you guys can put on repeat. If you have the campaigns feature, though, you can change up the postcard each time, whereas on the free version or the version that comes with everything, you can just have it repeating the same card. This gives you to where you can say 21 days. He wants to send it two times. Then the next one goes and it's a different postcard sending after 21 days. You can say 15 days. Talk to a gentleman today. He does 15 days, 15, 21, 30. Like you can customize the whole shebang. Um, so that's a really big way to up your marketing, especially if you're planning on dropping a ton on marketing. This is a great thing to invest in to really just level up your game on that. Mm -hmm. And then signatures, everyone asks, where do I change my return address? Where do I change my phone number? It's in your signature. So you can do mailers drop down and go to your signature, add your picture in. I will tell you right now, David's face is perfectly cropped in this circle. That does not mean it's perfectly cropped in every single template. So preview the template before you send it. And then just adjust your picture. Um, and this is where you would change, like I said, your return address. If you try to change it in your settings under your profile, it's not going to reflect on your mail. So you have to go to signatures to change this. If you're on enterprise, you get multiple signatures. And then, yeah, realtors, you can put your disclosure um, down at the bottom. Yeah, you'd put your MLS identification number, most likely. That's probably the only reason why people use this commonly. But it's yeah. there if you need it. Um, my campaigns is an add on. It's $20 extra a month on any plan. Uh, then we go to team. David, you want to go over that? Yes, I definitely do <laughs> want to go over that. So I'm the team leader and I have access to everything. I've got a lot of team members here, uh, but they don't all have access to everything. Uh, so there's uh, about 20 people that I have access to the CRM portion, which is like the leads view to see all of my properties. Street Engine is my drivers. So I've got like hundreds of people here because I've signed up a ton automatically from my Indeed job ad through the deal finder training in order to find my best drivers. So that's why there's so many here in the Street Engine. And then lists, I only have our internal team that has access to pulling lists because there's no reason to give anyone else that access. So you could invite somebody by email uh, this way. They could get an invite. You can give them access to any part of Deal Machine. Or, or again, this is how you could set up a driver page if you're on the Street Engine Enterprise to recruit those drivers. And uh, that is right there. Ross asked if Deal Machine does SMS marketing. Oh, yeah. Um, we are going to start doing that on Monday. So two days, two business days from now. I did, I wanted you to be the one. It's your baby. Thanks. <laughs> Guys, it's going to be awesome. Um, okay, going down, we're at team. What's next, David? Oh, I got distracted reading the comments again. That's okay. And, uh, now I will go on to getting free leads. Okay, this is something I, a lot of you need to take advantage of because so many of you are great and you tag us in your posts, put your promo code for your friends. We give you money and we give them money. Friends and you. Yeah, you both get money. Use this promo code if you each get one. There's no special person. You all are special. Give this promo code out. You get money. They get money. You get a handful of skip tracing. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And now settings. Okay. 
Here's the settings. <laughs> so your profile is just like your email and your name that you created your account with. And you can also upload your photo here, which would appear on your postcards as an option within your account in your company name. Yep. Um, engines and add-ons. This is where I know um, someone asked about campaigns. This is where you would add them as well as um, street pick, which is the Google pick. Um, real time, no, not that, sorry. Went back to the old way. <laughs> um, uh, uh, mail tracking, that would be here. Um, and this would also show you just how many, like David's pretty close to his 50,000 in the CRM. So there will be a little woo, 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 woo when he gets really close. But he's I was distracted because Michael Warden said you need to get an iPhone, Elise. <laughs> Are you getting an iPhone, by the way? What's the story on that? Yeah, yeah. So guys, I love my Android. So Josh Johnson is giving me an iPhone, but y'all need to bother him because he's been slacking on getting that in the mail. So Hannah did create us a clubhouse though, because she does have an iPhone. So we have the handle deal machine. So it's there, we will be on it. I promise you, if you, if you know, I don't know. I don't know when I'm getting this iPhone. <laughs> All right, let's keep going here. So these are your engines. You can view what products and services uh, you have and add ons as well. Yes. OK. And then, uh, yeah, let's we'll keep moving along. Sorry, guys. OK. And then uh, when you go back to settings, just a couple really quick things. Your default mailing options are here. This is where you can set up if you want one postcard property tags, you can edit all of your property tags. So you can have some that show and some don't, you can create new ones. So David could take some of these away. If you want your drivers just focused on like two of them, you could make it to where only two show, they can't tag anything else and they have to do that. And then if you go back. Um, I had tall grass and boarded up windows hidden, but I, I really would like to add those back. <laughs> So David just enabled them again. Um, and then badges, promo codes. <clears throat> These badges are phenomenal. I love them. I helped make them, that's why. But um, promo codes are great. That's where your friends would put in their pro Actually, they should put that in when they first sign up. And if they don't, you send them the sign up video that's on our YouTube channel and I tell them where to put it. Um, you can do stop all sending, automatically send mailers. I'll tell you guys right now though, I would err on the side of not automatically sending mail um, just so that you can regulate a little bit more and know what your budget is. I would just, I'm just gonna say that being very transparent. Um, and then there's dark mode, which I love, but it's horrible with tutorials, but it helps so much with your eyeballs. So definitely do dark mode, you're okay. This thing right here, open page on app start. Definitely don't ignore the dashboard, but I'll tell you right now, if you're driving for dollars, if you're using us for street engine, I would put it on the map because I've tried to quick draw my deal machine app. And if it's not on the map, like I start fumbling around. So this is a great way to put that default on there. So it opens up to what you want it to. Okay. Amy found David on clubhouse. Guys, I need to get up with it. I saw Grant Cardone on there. Gary V made a whole thing about it. And I was like, gosh, dang it. Tell Clubhouse to make it for Android. The next feature or the next part of the settings menu right below it is the feature request. And that, look at that. We listen to that for sure. Look at that text. The biggest one coming to you. You guys are like the first ones that really like know right now. So this is uh, this is exciting. That's right. And just those of you, just so you guys know, um, for the SMS that's coming, it's all compliant with everything. The do not call list. I mean, all the, David. Our, our CTO has done an amazing job with it. So I'm really excited for you guys to, to start with it and get going. 
Uh, Greg, you would not just get one number, uh, you would get a 30, minimum of 30 numbers for SMSing through Deal Machine. And they would route back to the number that you put in. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. I thought that too. <laughs> All right. What else should we look at? Help and support. You amazing. guys heard about Rochelle, you've heard about Joy. If you want to talk to somebody, this is where you do it. Uh, right here under start new conversation. I will say too, um, again, I know I'm biased, but our YouTube channel, if you think that there's a question or you have a question, go to YouTube, go to deal machine, type in the little search bar for what you might be looking for. I promise you, if it's not there, I need you to get on Facebook and in the deal machine community group. And I need you to tell me, Elise, you do not have this video. I need you to make this and I will make it. Awesome. Any final thoughts on the software demo? Play around with it. I like, it's a lot, it's so much, but it's so once you, like Robert said, once you become a master of it, like you can scale this like Robert and Catherine have done. So, um, and we're here to help you with that with any questions. And I just thank you guys for all coming to this webinar and sticking with us on a Thursday night. Um, and really enjoy seeing all of you and getting to know you guys. Absolutely. I loved everyone who especially joined on the call. I know Amy, you're still here with us. Thank you so much. Amy, your hair be looking good, girl. I just gotta say that too, man. For sure. Um, Thanks guys. So excited to talk to y'all and we will see you in two weeks, but we'll actually, I'll be having some lives throughout the week that I'll be posting. Don't forget to add to our community group because um, it's posted there as well as on our YouTube channel. All right. Hope you guys have a great night. Thanks Andrew for the love. We really love helping you and we appreciate you and I hope you guys have a great night and happy deal finding. Happy deal finding. Thank you.